Roland, man, welcome to the show. Appreciate you being here again, my friend. Uh, you know, one of our fans recently wrote in, and he said, I struggle with decoy placement. It seems like no matter what, birds hang up just outside the decoys or they don't decoy at all. Uh, he notes that he's got plenty of water movement. He just can't seem to decoy the ducks for whatever reason. So what advice would you have for him? Um, well, Eric, you know, uh, at different times of the year, you know, ducks kind of respond to decoys a little bit different. And, and I change up my spread throughout the season. But if he's having trouble with, with you know, ducks um, sticking far out the decoys, he might want to try maybe to space his decoys out, you know, kind of a, a, a far distance from him and, because when you put your decoys tight together, it looks like the ducks are nervous, and maybe the ducks are, are, are tensing that and wanting to stay further out. Or, you know, put your decoys in closer to your blind to lure them ducks in them extra 10 to 15 yards. Great, great advice. And that was kind of the follow-up question to that is how, how, how do you go about spreading your decoys? So let's, let's take it a little bit deeper. How do you go, to, go about spreading your decoys at different points throughout the season? You know, um, early season we tend to, you know, use bigger bigger spreads of decoys. And uh, as the season progresses, sometimes we'll take take them out. And then or sometimes we'll, we'll just keep adding more. It, it just depends on, you know, if we got migrators, birds that keep coming from the north, then, you know, we'll keep using big spreads. But if we're hunting local birds, that birds that, that kind of get stale, that don't want to respond to, to a duck call or, or even your spread, you know, you want to start taking – um, decoys out of your spread to make it look more realistic as to what you're seeing out there in the field. Sure, that and that's actually a great point. Uh, uh, is adjusting your spread based on the migration patterns, almost so to speak. So if you're seeing a lot of ducks fly, it makes sense to have a bigger spread. And if, like you said, you're seeing more local ducks uh, that are in the area that know the area and they know how many ducks are that, that are retained in that particular area, it's probably a good idea to adjust your spread to account for that so that it does look more realistic to the local birds. Greetings, my friends. Eric Wilkes here, Duck Hunting Fanatics, and I have on the line with me Roland Cortez from Arkansas County Guide Service down in Stuttgart, Arkansas. So, Roland, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being here. Eric, thanks for having me, man. My pleasure. What'd you see down in Stuttgart this week? Well, I mean, uh, the ducks are duck hunting's been been pretty decent around here. You know, we haven't had any big pushes of ducks from the north because of the weather, but you know, we've had you know decent numbers. We're shooting anywhere from from twelve to twenty ducks, you know, per blind, and then we're also shooting you know anywhere from from twelve to, to twenty four speckled bellies with these blinds. So you know, it, it's been a pretty good season. It's just you know, it's been kind of warm up in Stuttgart, and you know we're kind of we're kind of handling whatever Mother Nature sends at us. You know, having a warmer winter. Yeah, and I know that's been the seems to be the case. You know, in various places across the country, uh, we've had some cold spurts. Even here, where I'm at in Wisconsin, it was a little bit slow. It was a really tough year because it was really pretty warm. We had one, you know, I would say cold spout back in october but other than that generally speaking it's been pretty warm for us here so i know it's been tough out there for a lot of guys but you know you got to hunt those fronts and you know hunt the weather and just keep on hunting that's all you can do is get you know and i know you and i were kind of talking back and forth the other day when we were texting each other you know any day in the any day in the field hunting is better than a day in the in the office and that is and that is true there you know and uh we just we just out here trying hard and just trying to stay on on the ducks, you know, and it's it's definitely been a it's been a good season for us, but you know the lack of of weather has kind of you know halted the ducks, you know, up north, and and we keep hoping with every front that we get a break or we get some some new birds in the area. But you know we are having you know a, a good season, but again, like we talked about in a, in another episode, is that you know pressure management. You know we are we are managing our our blinds. You know, pretty hard by just hunting them in the morning and, and let let the afternoon rest and, and trying to move around and, and give these blinds, you know, um, time to rest so we can, they can build, actually build up ducks back. Being that we're we're not getting a, a migration, so we're kind of hunting local ducks. So you know, we're having to watch how we hunt our blinds. Sure, and that makes total sense. And you know. <laughs> We get a lot of guys that email in, they're asking lots of questions, and I know from just from some of the responses we've had, 
it seems like a lot of guys, you know, they're not they're not guides. They don't have these huge, you know, spreads that they can put out. How would you go about setting up a, a smaller spread? Say say maybe a six pack or a, maybe 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 up to a dozen decoys. How would you set up a smaller spread? <clears throat> well, Eric, if, if I was hunting a smaller spread, you know, I kind of right. And again, it all bases on the time of the year. You know, if, if we're hunting early season ducks, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my my ducks in kind of little family groups. But as the season progresses, the ducks start to pair up. You kind of want to put you know a drake and a hen together and, and kind of space them far apart because that's that's kind of how you see ducks out in the wild. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I'd set up my spread. You know, if I was hunting you know a, a dozen a dozen or so or less decoys. Right. Right. Well, and that's a perfect segue into calling as well. Uh, how do you go about identifying the proper calling technique based on duck behavior? Again, you know, when calling ducks, you, you want to read your ducks. You know, again, we're going to talk about, you know, different times of the year. Early season, you can get away with a lot of calling. You know, as the season progresses, you're going to want to slack up on the calling only only call your ducks when you have to and also use a lot of alternate calls like a pintail whistle or a mallard drake or, or a gray duck call you know later in the season these birds get accustomed to hearing mallard calls every time they pass a blind so using these other calls could definitely add more tricks in your bag as far as killing late season ducks what's the significance of it right what's the significance of proper calling I mean, as far as working ducks? Yes. Well, I mean, if you see ducks out in the distance, you know, you want to try to get them um, kind of a, a, a hail call. You know, it doesn't have to be that loud ringing type hail call, but more of a of a, of a greeting type hail call where you're not calling as loud. And as the ducks kind of work you and get closer to you, you want to go into a greeting, a greeting call and, you know, and, and maybe some, some chatter, some feet chuckle and stuff like that. And if the ducks leave you, you kind of want to come back you do a little comeback calling and then finish up with some feeding to try to get them in closer. But in, in, the, in, our, in that whole time of, of um, calling them ducks with a mallard call, you can also have another friend of yours blowing a pintail whistle or blowing a widgeon call or, or maybe a mallard drake or even a gadwall call, mixing that in to your calling to where it sounds like all of these deep decals you have in front of you come alive with different types of ducks. You know, knowing, knowing when to call that ducks, you know, has a lot to do with it too. Yeah, so let's talk about that for just a second. I mean, you know, how, how do you know when to start and when to stop calling? Well, I mean, uh, rule of thumb is if the duck's coming to you, he's cupped up, cedar down, you don't need to pick up your call. You need to pick up your gun. So if the ducks are coming to you, they're cupped up, they're committed to your decoys, don't pick up a call, grab your gun, boom, kill that duck. But if, you know, if the ducks are coming to you and they're not looking like they're wanting to do none of that, you know, you, you hit them with, with a little greeting call, you know, a, a couple of five to seven no string of quacks kind of fast to get their attention. And as the ducks turn, you know, you, you try not to call at your ducks when they're looking at you. You kind of want to call them on, on their wing tip. So as the duck leaves you, then you can kind of hit him with a comeback call and try to turn him around, you know, pretty quick on that. But, you know, reading your ducks, like I said, and just, and just knowing what a duck does and how he, he flies and all that, if, if it's a fast wing beat, then, you know, you might not kill that duck. But if it's a slower wing beat, you know, you might actually get a chance to harvest that duck and uh, actually put them in your bag. So you kind of got to watch it. And, and we can get really into in-depth, into calling and all that stuff, you know. And, and uh, But that's kind of how, you know, I, I work my I work my blind, you know. Yeah, makes sense. No, and and, and that's great. I, I appreciate you sharing. I know we get a lot of guys that, you know, they're asking the, you know, how do I go about doing proper calling? And, you know, when do I start? When do I stop? And what do I need to look for? And, and I think the plan here, we'll do a whole series just on on proper calling and, you know, we can talk about technique and strategy and, and, and all that. I, I think you're right. We can get into a whole lot of detail in terms of mm -hmm. calling. And okay. so, so you know, we'll save that for another episode. But I just wanted to give people really just some, some general ideas and some different things that they can look for and uh, try to give some different points of view, too, because depending on where you are, what area you're in, in, in the country you're hunting, the the strategy may change. It may be a little bit different, that, right? And so, and that's right, Eric. You know, every, every place you hunt is different. So, you know, uh, you got to kind of adjust your calling to wherever you're, you're at in the country, you know? 
Yep, exactly, exactly. You know, and there are some places like if you're hunting. I know if you're doing if you're hunting sea ducks, right? Then you, you're not going to be calling at all for any reason <laughs> because that, it, you just can't. It just makes sense. It doesn't make any sense. So, that, and you're right. So awesome. Well, thanks for sharing and thanks for being here on the show with us today, Roland. We certainly do appreciate it. Uh, tell everybody how they can book a hunt with you, real quick. Eric, if anybody wants to come to Stuttgart and and, and uh, come visit Richard Tone, come to Mac, you know, come see the history of. Of hunting stunt guard, you know, you can look us up at www.arcountyguideservice.com. You can look us up on Instagram, Facebook, Arkansas County Duck Guide Service. You know, we're on Instagram. We stay up to date. We post pictures daily on, on what we're killing, no matter if we're killing ducks or not. We post pictures. But if anybody's looking for a, a great duck hunt and a phenomenal speckle belly hunt, you know, look us up. Give us a call. You can call me at 985-414-4997. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. Again, you've got it right there. We will tag you in the post when we get it out on the social channels. And I can tell you for sure, uh, these guys, they're very serious hunters. They've got an awesome operation. I've, I see the pictures that they post daily. Uh, Roland, fortunately for me, because we have each other's cell phone numbers, he, he sends me text messages of the kills daily. So I can tell you, rest assured, you're going to have a great experience. You're going to have a lot of fun, and you're definitely going to kill some ducks. So uh, once again, Roland, appreciate you being here. Everyone, get a hold of, of Roland Cortez out of Arkansas County Guide Service, and have a great afternoon, a great day, and we'll see you again on another episode. Greetings fellow duck hunting fanatics, Eric Wilkes here, co-founder, and I wanted to take a moment and personally thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, make sure you click the link just below this video to go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you get all of our future updates and future videos that we release.